Good everybody, it's Graham from Unearthed and today we are looking at everyday artefacts from the medieval period. Now it might look a little bit mundane, there's not dripping with gold and silver, but these artefacts that I'm showing you here today is what the medieval people had on them every day out in the fields, casual losses, little trinkets, keys, ring brooches, buckles, thimbles, seals, heraldic pendants, spouts, spurs, you name it, it's here. Now, you may come across these guys uh, in the field detecting you may or may know not what they are. Uh, hopefully this video goes some way into showing you guys what you can find out in the field from the medieval period. So what we'll do, we'll start with this. This was found recently and as you can see it's still got mud in the teeth. That would have been part of a giant key. Uh, medieval key would have opened a huge oak door is my guessing but look at the size of that what a shame it's broke beautiful find uh, party fact rather than artifact but when you look at the finished article there's one that's full now that's a big key believe me that's a big key that would have opened a substantial door but when you put it next to that there's a huge difference in size. That dwarfs it, so that would have been an enormous key. So there, if you find the teeth end of it, and you're wondering what it is, in the murky mud, and you see this design, and you see the teeth and everything else, you, you're then going to think, that's got to be a medieval key or part of it. So that's, uh, I hope that helps, guys. Gives you an idea. Sometimes you find these end bits, and you think, oh, it could be Viking or it could be Saxon. Well, it's not, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, it's the hand grip part of the key. You know, our keys nowadays are mundane, plain looking. The medieval period, you know, they made little lines on it. They made it stylized. They made everything look pretty. Um, and that would have been a beautiful find. Uh, way back in them days, it was a beautiful find. It would have been all shiny and bronze looking. But it's still a fantastic find, one of my favourite medieval artefacts. That so, we'll put that down. Over here we have more keys. Now these keys are casket keys, as you as you can see. There's a whole host of different shapes and sizes. These would have been for caskets, small caskets. But I th I'm thinking that these were worn around people's necks. We find too many of them in random places. Um, you can just imagine a bit of a cord through there and these little keys hanging around people's necks as maybe a good luck charm. I'm sure I read somewhere that the key represents um, so a symbol to unlocking um, something somewhere. So it's I th I'm pretty pretty sure that these represent something, these keys, rather than an everyday item. Bit of a good luck symbol, possibly. Who knows? But they're a fantastic find. You can find these just about anywhere. I found these length and breadth of Britain up in Cumbria, down in Norfolk, Suffolk, Lincolnshire. They come up all over the place. But um, that gives you an idea what you can what you can uncover out in the field. Great little finds of casket keys. Now what we're going to do, we're going to move over to this uh, rather strange looking item. Um, I'll have to see if I can get that in. Now it's a huge artifact when you look at it, but it's actually a medieval purse bar frame. So that would have been suspended from somebody's belt. As you can see, there's two holes here, two holes there, which would have come all the way down here with the purse. Um, we, we find chunks of these, the ploughs hit them. So that section, you can probably see that if I'm hiding the rest of it with my finger. You'll come across that and you'll think, what is that with them two holes in it? Well, you know it's part of a bigger artefact. Medieval purse bar. Lovely find. We would have had a loop here as well. Pity that we could, couldn't find the contents of the purse but that's how it goes sometimes so that's one purse bar we find quite a lot of different styles of these but this is just one example and um, so i thought i'd show you that to folks if you find that of interest now the next one is a common find um people call them ring brooches people call them ring buckles we've always called them medieval ring brooches and uh, continue to do that but you can see this is a bronze one in really good condition and um, 14th 15th century is my guess pin still intact but you imagine if you found that without the pin you'd be thinking mm, is it a horse harness ring or something similar well it gives you an idea the pins are found separately quite often this is one from Cumbria as you can see it's got an iron rotted and a rotting iron pin now if that pin disappeared and I just found that ring 
Would I have thought it was an, an early, you know, an early ring brooch buckle? Probably not. So don't get caught out, guys. Some of these rings that you do find out in the field without the pins are actually from these artifacts. And of course, they did ones with design on them. You can actually see this. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six turrets. And each one of them turrets would have had white paste in. So this would have looked quite uh, attractive when it was first found. Um, I have to say, guys, that this particular artifact uh, was minus its pin. And I got the pin added by a friend who um, restores uh, artifacts. So he did a really good job of uh, putting that pin on. Thanks very much, Nick, if you're watching. You did a great job. But, of course, that's a full one now. But, of course, you find the incomplete ones, the broken ones. So if you wondered what that was when you've... You, you pulled it up out the ground. What you know? What can it be with these little turrets on? That's what it is. It's part of a ring brooch. That would have been the same as that one, with all the turrets going round. Unfortunately, broken by the plough. Uh, back to the ring brooches again. Full ones. This one's a stylized one. It's got little grooves all the way around it with a bronze pin. Very attractive, and they are beautiful finds. There's no two ways about it. One of my favourite medieval artefacts, and of course you can find them. I've got these in the display case. You can find them really tiny. So as you can see, there's two tiny ones. They're that fragile and that delicate. I'm not even going to get it out of the frame. Um, quite quite a lot of detail in them too. So I'll keep that to one side. Uh, up next is this rather strange artefact. Now I see these on our Unearthed Facebook group. Uh, if you can hear a noise in the background, that's me moving around on the uh, on the seat. So I do apologise. Uh, this is an interesting artefact because I found this many, many moons ago and I wondered and wondered what it was. Um, it turned out to be a 14th century spout, dog's head spout. As you can see, um, this is a dog's head with its ears there, eyes there, another ear at the back here. This would have been sweated onto a vessel, a wine vessel, and acted as a pouring. I don't know if you guys can see that, that action. That would have poured wine water out of it. Again, it's a functional thing, but it's a decorated thing. The medieval people love to decorate their artefacts. So there is that of interest. So you may find these broken or full. Wonder what they are. Medieval dog's head spout. Um, next up is uh, these little artefacts. Um, the beehive thimble. Beautiful design again. These are wonderful finds. They're very, very rare. We find them full. I've got quite a few of these over the years. Um, full is just a selection of them. I think I'm up to about 15 now, full ones. But of course, you can get them where they're squashed. And this one here is never going to be restored anytime soon because it's got a bit of flint stuck in the in the hole. That's going to be, take some digging out. So unfortunately, it's been squashed with the flint in, but it's still full. So it gives you some idea of what you can find. The good old medieval beehive thimble. All shapes and sizes, some of them have more design on than that even. Now, everyday items you'll come across and you'll think, what is it? Uh, what's this going to, you know, what's this turn out to be? Well, here's one. Uh, this is medieval again, early medieval. When I say early medieval, probably 12th, 13th century. It's actually a figure of a bishop. So I think that would have been mounted onto something. There's a little, tiny little uh, dot here, if you will, a raised end um, it could be Thomas A. Beckett or something like that definitely got a religious purpose I think it would probably been on a belt maybe who knows but really desirable find again like I said medieval um, that's the only one I've ever found of it that's the only one I've ever seen like it uh, found a couple of years ago now but um, again the medieval people love to make these beautiful little artifacts and of course moving on quickly these are found occasionally. I don't find it anywhere near enough of these things. A little medieval seal. Now you can see on that the design. I um, don't know if Melanie can see that. Yeah, that's got a stag's head on it, believe it or not. So it would have probably represented a hunter. Um, which is a really attractive seal. With unusual it's shield-shaped design. And you get the chessman type pieces again. This is a round one with the Lamb of God on. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there it goes. So if you're pulling these things out of the ground and you're wondering what they are, lovely little medieval seals. And of course they do them in the different shapes of fleur de lis in the middle of this one. 
these would have been hung around people's necks or kept all you know personal items that they would have lost out in the fields and of course again they do them in lead which is this isn't the best example unfortunately it's um it was actually found uh, in a watery area and it come up uh, quite um crude looking but it's uh, anyway it's there if you get them sort of lead shapes I'm wondering what they are I think seal and of course the back of it it's got the line where it's uh, been cast and moving on again to another find made of lead this time it's a uh, pilgrim's ampulla now the we find loads of these squash this is actually a full example would have been filled with holy water the pilgrims would have had this uh, would have had lugs on the side here unfortunately they're broken you can just see the remains of the lug where it would have been either side well that's a really attractive find one of my favorite ampullas that most of mine are squashed and uh, a little bit smaller than that so i'm quite pleased with that uh, that find we'll put that back gently what else can we show you right um these things you find a heck of a lot of these in, out in the field and you're going to wonder what they are all detectorists do this one is made of bronze and it's actually a pot leg medieval pot leg they are you'll find them all shapes and sizes big and small these would have been on the side of cauldrons um, they come up all over the place don't discard them folks the medieval they are a nice find in themselves there's a different type here this has got like a, a, it's a leg with a boot on now i think uh, this is a knight's foot you can see some of the effigies of knights in churches and things it's got a similar shaped boot on and leg they would have had there would have been two or three of these on the side of a vessel. Um, again, pot leg. So, really nice find. Not often they come up in that condition. Next up is these pendants, horse heraldic pendants or heraldic pendants types. We have one or two of these coming up every now and then. Again, I don't find nearly enough of these. This has got three lions on, would have had red enamel on it way back uh, when it was uh, in all its glory. Sadly, the soil hasn't been kind to it, and most of the, if not all of the, the red enamel's gone now. You can just see remains of traces of it. But that would have had the dragons, three dragons, th oh, sorry, three lions. I've got to get dragons out of my head. Lions, three lions on it. So there you go, that's one. Another one, a pretty poor example here, and the, the loop at the top's broken, but that would have had a family crest on it. And again, I can see remains of blue carefully, if I look carefully on that. Um, so that's another example of uh, a heraldic pendant. Next up is this item. We think this is probably a little bit later than medieval, um, late medieval uh, period, but it gives you some idea what can be found. We, we've put it in the medieval class because it could be late medieval, but uh, the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking it's probably into the Tudor period. But it's a spur. Now, when it's a shame that it's broken, it would have had another arm on identical to this going up, um, but it's sadly gone, but it nearly was full. We find a lot of these, so if you find them ends and you're wondering what them ends are, well, they're off spurs. So that gives you some idea, folks, of what they are. Now, we, when we do these videos, we could put posh backgrounds on and we could put them in categories, but I like them scattered and I can just pick them off and show you um, before we disappear because the time's kicking on. These little belt mounts, as you can see up here, all different types of belt mounts uh, from the medieval period would have been on leather. And you can see some of them, this one here, ornate, it's got a king's head on it with a crown, which is really nice. found quite a few of them. Some are a uh, shell design from the pilgrims, representing pilgrims. Some of them have been wonderfully gold gilded. Um, these would have stood out in the times. You know what, there's a little pendant here with the, it still swings this, it's been gold gilded. It's got like a, a scallop shell design on the bottom, which represents the pilgrim. All sorts of weird and wonderful things from the medieval period. Now, last before we go, rather mundane find. Um, what is it? Everybody finds these from time to time. It's actually part of a medieval knife handle. The knife would have been in this groove here, but it would have made of, been made of iron. That's long gone. It just leaves these little sections, med little medieval knife handle. They come off quite a lot of sites. Um, you find them all over the place. You probably wonder what they are, and that's what it is. Now, this is a little interesting find. This was eyes only, of course, because it's made of clay. The little lady. Um, for years and years, I always thought and wished that she was medieval uh, because she's got like the uh, hood or the, or the shroud. She's got something round her neck and holding something down, sadly broken. A uh, very delicate find. Just wandering around, detecting on a field, and there she was lying on the top. I don't think she's medieval, but you never know. 
Um, it's probably a, quite a bit late, maybe Georgian period, but it gives you some idea of what you can find when you're searching for medieval artefacts. Uh, eyes only, keep your eyes peeled because these little finds come up from time to time. Your detector's not going to pick them up for obvious reasons, but you never know, you may find one just lying on the top. There she is in all the glory. Beautiful little find. I wish she was full, but uh, I've searched in vain for the rest of her, but she, it's, I've never I've never found it since. So, folks, I hope that helps and it's give you some idea of the medieval finds that you can make out in the field. Please comment on the uh, YouTube thread. We'll do more of these videos in the next few weeks leading up to Christmas and beyond of different finds. But for now, happy hunting and stay tuned. Thanks for watching.